Antimicrobial resistance, uh, it's a big problem, as we know. Uh, I think at the moment the estimate is that about 35,000 people in Europe die every year from AMR. Globally, we expect by 2050 there to be about 10 million deaths a year. So this is a, a substantial problem and uh, that we need to address and take very seriously, as has been pointed out uh, this afternoon. The solution, of course, part of the solution is all of the, the preventative things that we've spoken about, more responsible prescribing and consumption patterns, uh, less use of anti antibiotics in, uh, in livestock farming, of course. But we know that behavioral change is difficult. We've seen that with climate change. We see that with AMR. And part of the solution is going to have to be we need novel antimicrobials to be developed. That's going to have to be part of the solution, firstly. Secondly, part of the solution is going to have to be we need to make sure that diagnostics and treatment is available in the poorest parts of the world. Because as was pointed out earlier, we're not safe until we're all safe. Okay, and that's an important part of what I want to talk about. So I want to talk about those two issues, um, uh, novel microbial, antimicrobial development and access to medicines and diagnostics in the context of the socio-political environment that we've lived in over the last 30 years. And I'm going to divide it into a couple of, uh, couple of seasons, shall we say. In the 1990s, I've called that the era of multilateralism. And I've said multilateralism with tea and cake because I think it was a lovely decade. And then we move on to another era that I've called polarization like a punch in the gut and things fell apart and we'll talk about that in a second. And superimposed on, these, on this socio-political timeline, we went on some public health adventures. And I've called those thinking big, thinking smart, and outsourced thinking, and we'll talk about each of those one at a time. But let's first talk a little bit about the political and social environment in which we went on these global health ventures, particularly in the context of AMR, access to medicines and the development of new drugs. And we'll start off by talking about multilateralism with tea and cake. I loved the 1990s, uh, and I think it was, you know, it, was a, it was a fantastic decade. I was young and healthy. I looked much better. I had hair on my head. <laughs> it was terrific. But the 1990s really was a decade of fantastic multilateralism. Uh, the Berlin Wall had just come down. The Cold War came to an end. Nelson Mandela comes out of jail. Apartheid in South Africa comes to an end, and I was in South Africa. I'm a South African at the time, so I was very excited about that. We all go online, we get, we get cell phones and internet ad uh, email addresses. It's the quintessential decade of globalization. Economists talk about the long boom. They say there's going to be this endless economic growth and we're all going to be rich.